this here is our Boeing 737 simulator, and for a long time we have been thinking about, damn, we would wish to fly with the autopilot system on, and that requires the MCB, of course. Well, now we have it designed and fully built, and we're gonna show you how we did it. Our design process will start in Fusion 360. Let's get into it. So the first step in Fusion is to make the sketch of the general layout, all the holes and the general dimensions of it. Then you want to make the backlighting and this includes the texts and the little shapes that uh, encase the buttons and switches like you see here. We have the sketches, we want to extrude them into a real component and first we want to make the backplate. The backplate has all the cutouts for backlighting and the switches and it also has a little uh, gap on the back side of the board to house all the backlighting LEDs on the PCB. We make the front plate visible here and that front plate uh, has all the white texts and all the details that you need. Then we combine both of them, see that they line up and when they do we can move into actually installing some components. We modeled some of these 3D components of the real uh, components that we have so that we can easily see exactly what the dimensions need to be for the PCB and everything else. Uh, we lay them out in the correct positions. We also modeled this custom dual encoder slash dual rotary switch casing to house the heading knob and then we modeled some 3D shapes to add to the details. Those include the flight director guards and then the vertical speed sort of a bevel rails. For the seven segment display holes we wanted to make this black frame with these cool little fillets in them to make it look realistic and add some details and highlights. Then we modeled all of these buttons in there. They have this black casing and then a separately made button so that they look realistic and uh, work good. Then we move on to the final details making these uh, buttons for the crossover, speed interv and alt interv buttons. Next step is to make the knobs. There are a bunch of them, different designs, all matching the real aesthetics. Last thing was to do with the flight director, master and our shader lights and the uh, auto total arm lights as a transparent component. All the front stuff and important stuff done. We have one more thing which is the back casing slash guard on the back side which won't be visible but really adds to the security and strength of this model. And that finishes up on our Fusion design and we can move on to Kiket. Okay, here's the root page and in the center we have this Arduino Mega Pro Mini. And we have this 0.36 inch uh, 7 segment displays which we can start seeing right here. So, on this page we have nine seven segment displays and then we have five max 7219 seven segment controllers and to each of that controller we have also uh, put up one resistor and two capacitors on the next page we have uh, this dm13a controller and that is a led controller which we have 16 leds connected to it but unfortunately for us there are 17 leds we need to connect here so there is just an one individual LED on the next page. And here are these dual encoders pins laid out on this page. And here on this page we have the regular encoders including the vertical speed knob. And here we have these toggle switches connected to. They include the flight director switches and autopilot disengage which only has one of those switches connected to the board. And also we have this auto throttle arm switch. Here we have the tactile switches, 14 of these switches here and then three of these including the CO, speed interval and alt interval. And what makes this page special is this power management thing called buck converter and it allows us to have better performance on the seven segment displays. Also we have here this MOSFET driver for our magnetic switch. So here we have these backlight LEDs, we have nearly 200 of these one white yellow LEDs and then we have 15 of these green LEDs 
which one of them is actually on the backside of the, our PCB. The only things left here are these mounting holes and then we have these two pieces of 16 pin connectors for customers to use. So we exported this user drawing from Fusion 360 to help us align all of the pieces here in Kicker. This is the layout page and here you can see all of those components laid out like they should. If you're counting the vias here are over 2000 connections made, so we used the AutoRouter plugin on KiCad to route all of these connections. Even with AutoRouter, it still took more than an hour to do. The last thing to do is to create the copper pour, and on the top layer, it's almost 99% only copper. And on the bottom side, it's not that much, but we still made some copper pours there too. And KiCad has this awesome tool that lets you preview the PCB in 3D render. And we took this 3D render straight to Fusion 360 and fitted it there to our 3D model of the panel so we could see that everything lined up perfectly. Before we continue, let me tell you a little bit about this video's sponsor, PCB Way. PCB Way is a parts manufacturer who provides custom PCBs, CNC parts and many other services to hobbyists and companies alike. Their simple instant quote tool gives you a really precise price estimate even before ordering and their customer service is super helpful. One thing I personally love about PCBWay's website is their 24 hour production status transparency. They will update your product's manufacturing status live and you can see exactly how your order is progressing. Their cheap prices and fast services are definitely worth checking out and you can do that by clicking the first link down in the description. PCBWay is also hosting their annual patch design contest for their 11th year anniversary. They are giving away amazing prizes and you can check the conditions for their competition down in the description. Thank you PCBWay, now back to the video. Alright, and that's uh, how we designed the PCB and now we have the physical package here. Yeah, and now we start to unbox it. Yeah, took like a couple weeks I think. Yeah, yeah. Not, not even that I think. Yeah. yeah. A moment of truth. Oh yeah. Oh damn. Two pieces, three pieces. Let's start with right. two pieces. Yeah, we just need one. We were thinking about how big is the uh, anti-static back gonna be because this is a huge PCB. I think they used like two. <laughs> yeah, two <laughs> in the two like together. But wow, does it look good? Oh yeah. We have everything from our company names. Yeah, all the details. And details and then. The serial number, for example. Yeah, all these were, uh, we talked about these in the video where we ordered this, uh, how to place these uh, labels so that the order or the serial numbers go in the correct spots. Yeah, and if we take a look to here, is it gonna fit? Yes, it will. Just perfectly. Nice. Okay, so now we have hooked this up to our power supply. And let's see how this looks. Oh yeah, it's so bright. It's it's As really. If, if I close all the lights in the room, it's really bright. Yeah. But that's that's great. <laughs> yeah, that, that's gonna be really good for the plastic really pitted panels, which do absorb quite a lot of light. Yeah. And it does have a dimming ability in the plane too, so uh, it doesn't need to be this bright always. Yeah. I hope this looks very good once we get the 3D print on top of this. fitting this like back panel to the PCB and it's starting to look really good yeah we still need to file just a little bit off of this and probably here yeah and we are testing this to make sure our spaces are good for the encoders and seven segments and everything else yeah for example I think here yeah yeah this will go here yep and then one that I wanted to especially make sure is this one since yeah. that has the specific hole too yeah 
Yeah, that's good. Coming up now. So. installed two LEDs you can see them there's the green LEDs here there they are uh, clear green LEDs and then we have also put these encoders here they are perfect and you can see how this looks underneath here yep we didn't put the uh, cover panel on or the front panel on yet so you could see Oh, this looks. Yeah, I think it's a really good contrast. You can see the behind the scenes, and you can see the actual. Yeah. Look. Well, of course, this is missing the buttons and mm -hmm. that stuff, but I think it looks pretty cool like this, like half made. Oh yeah. And we have been sitting on this a long time, so it's finally getting assembled. It's yeah. been just on the shelf. From well, behind, it looks like this. now installed the installation went flawlessly let's now plug this thing up and see if it works and now the MCP is all plugged in and it is looking and working fantastically and yeah all of these knobs are working as they should and yeah the auto throttle mechanism is also working and after I press this uh, auto throttle disengage button on the throttle it should return and it does and wow that is awesome you can't even find that from like 500 to 1000 euro uh, costing MCPs but you can buy them from us all right so this video took us like three months and it was so much uh, work to do um, yeah if you're if you're thinking to do this yourself I don't think uh, it's a good idea because it's so much work so instead, go with ours, we, uh, we do it cheaply, and we have this same design here on our website at vsims.fi. But this is for today's video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and see you in the next video. Goodbye.